Always Ayala is the foremost internationally acclaimed authority on developing true connections. Ayala is the founder and CEO of Universal Connections, Inc., the world's premier relationship firm that is revolutionizing life through holism and truth. A highly sought life and relationship coach, professional matchmaker, astrologer, philosopher, and author, Ayala is always Ayala. This episode is brought to you by Mount Gox, M-T-G-O-X dot com, and U.S. Gold Coins, 800 Hot Coin, and Mezzy Grill, M-E-Z-E Grill dot com. And now, always, I yell it. Hi, and welcome to the second episode of Always I Yell It. I am deeply touched and moved by the overwhelming response we had on our first show. I'm so excited and honored to have so many wonderful people reaching out, emailing me, voicemailing me, and it's really, really exciting. Um, I am always Ayelet, and joining me today is my co-host, Oscar. Actually, today's a special day for us. Today is the sixth year anniversary of when I drove out to Wisconsin 15 hours nonstop to pick up my little boy and bring him back home. Um, so today's a special day for Oscar and I. Also joining me today for, a, for uh, the segment, for the Simple Truth segment, is a very special guest honoring me today with her presence. It's, we're actually mutual fans, I think. Um, Athena Reich is a truth-based artist. She writes lyrics about uh, love, life, relationships, kind of like what I'm doing in, I guess, book form, she's putting into musical form. Um, she's fabulous and she's here to join us today on our uh, segment called The Simple Truth. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. You know, it's amazing how we met because I read your article, The Value of Love, and I was moved. I think you're so crea- courageous to be talking about the values and the issues that you talk about today you. yeah thank your you philosophies so are very thank courageous you. and they need to be said thank and so you. I'd emailed you and said I really appreciate this article and then we ended up meeting and and here we are and here we are yes and and it was nice and you ended up checking out my music and so yes that's how we yes met. and I, I love your music um, actually Athena is often compared to she's fabulous you, you, you recorded let me just remember the specific you're a singer song she's a singer songwriter actress She's released five albums, five CDs. She's been, her video has been number one on MTV. Mm-hmm. And wait, what? MTV Logo. MTV Logo. Yeah. Her video hit number one on MTV Logo. And you, what am I forgetting? Um, well, I also write mu- for musicals. The latest production was Lemon Meringue, and I was the composer for composer. that show, as well as actress in it. Right. And, and I tour. A, you, I, yes, you've toured across North America and Europe. Yes. And her music is often she's she's phenomenal, very powerful voice, and her music is often compared to um, other artists that I'm particularly uh, a fan of. Um, Annie Lennox, mm-hmm. she's been out there for a while. Adele, fabulous sound, and of course the fabulous Lady Gaga, who I absolutely adore. And maybe Lady Gaga will join us someday. That, wouldn't that be a blast? That would be awesome. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, today joining us is Athena and we're going to talk about her work and her uh, upcoming appearances and what inspires her and how she gets her creative juices going and talk a little bit about Sure, that. absolutely, yeah. Um, and the simple truth. Absolutely. Um, my, I, people often ask how I get inspired to write songs and tell, tell me about how it started for you like what made right. you pursue I grew up in a very musical house okay so I was told that my mom I was in the womb mm-hmm. you know a little baby and she brought me to a Beethoven concert and I started kicking to the beat really yeah so was it mostly your upbringing was mostly classical music my or? mother plays amazing Beethoven and Chopin on the piano and I had a girl I used to lie underneath the piano and just wow. listen to her play and um, you, the sound that you hear un- when you're actually underneath a grand piano or a baby grand is much richer than when you were anywhere else. And this is a I little, can imagine. yeah. So this is this is how I grew up. So I, um, my mother started teaching me piano when I was four, and I started taking lessons more seriously when I was eight. And I started acting and singing and everything as a child. I asked for it. 
um, when I was young. Um, I said, I want an agent when I was four. My mom said, how do you know what an agent is? Go play in the backyard. But I was just, you know, you, born you, loving to perform. You were born to be a star. I was born to be a star. So, um, and then I just, I, 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 I was doing mainly all classical music as a musician. And then when I was 17, my teacher said, you know, you've been practicing an hour and a half every day. You need to move up to three hours a day and become a concert pianist if you, if you choose. So is p piano your primary? Yes. Wow. And that's instrument. my personal favorite. My brother plays the piano. My mother plays the piano. My father used to play the piano when we were children, too. Okay. I can totally relate. Yeah. And I, my favorite, what, really what moves me, another band that I'm a fan of is One Republic. Have you heard their right. music? Right, yeah. Because yeah. They, they, they're, they're modern, they're, they're um, pop and yeah. rock, yeah. but they have that very classical element yes. to, to their music yeah. and also truth-based lyrics which I love so, right. and yeah. of course as, as you do in, in your music. Yeah so what happened was my teacher said you're phenomenal do you want to be a concert pianist because you could go that route mm -hmm. and I and right then I said no I want to write my own songs and so I, I taught myself guitar and at age 16 and 17 I started playing little coffee shops and from Toronto and writing songs and the song I just felt I had so many stories to tell I, would, I often will take a dream that I have and I will just transcribe the dream into a song. Wow! And tell um, me about one of your songs that well, that the you very first, that way. the very first song that I ever wrote. I was 16 years old, and it's called "Merry Go Round and Up and Down." And I had a dream about a carousel and and a little girl, and I was a little girl, and I was going up and down. It was so fun, and the carousel going round and round, and there's this creepy guy, and he was like going to attack me, and so I was like trying to just stay on the carousel. So the, it was about you know a loss of innocence and things like that. And I turned it into a song called Merry Go Round and Up and Down. But it's really a song about hope and saying in the end, like, things got messy and I got, like, tainted and I lost innocence. But, like, in the end, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back on that horse and I'm going to live life and I'm going to go up and down and round and round and Absolutely. ride this, well, this wonderful life. I always life. say everything in life is cyclical, so what goes so around there you comes go. around. And it's not necessarily in, like, the karmic, like the karma sense of the word. It's, yeah. Life is cyclical, and Your unless own life. you get to the bottom, you can't get to the top. And the lower mm -hmm. you fall, the higher you'll, you'll the higher you'll be. It's almost it's almost like a, a it's it's a metaphysical law. Right. It is a metaphysical law, and I I'm you know of course you know uh, a metaphysicist in in that, in that regard. It's a metaphysical law, but it's um it's also a physical law. Right. That if you know when we're um, leveraging anything, mm -hmm. the further back you pull, the further far it's going to go. Right. So. And such is life. Sure, absolutely. Nature abhors a vacuum, right? Nature doesn't like emptiness. Right? So you pull back in one direction, nature fills it with something else, and you go back. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. In fact, that's a very profound um, comment about what you just said. It's, it, it touches me deeply. I wanted to say I forgot there were some points that I wanted to mention with regards to our last show. Um, the author of the book I cited was Who Moved My Cheese. It was Dr. Spencer Johnson who wrote the book, Who Moved My Cheese. I was highlighting um, the concept of change and reading the signs on the wall when life is happening and it's telling us it's time to move on, mm. it's time for change. Um, Spence, Dr. Spencer Johnson, MD, wrote a, a fabulous book. It's almost a children's book, mm. but it really highlights how life is constantly changing mm. and how you need to be conscious of the writing on the wall when it's time to prepare mm. to move on. Mm. And so that's a, a really important theme. Um, and the other uh, concept that I wanted to talk about is how you just said how when there's a void, mm -hmm. something's going to fill it. Mm -hmm. And each of us has the potential to be constantly fulfilled within mm. ourselves. Mm. And by doing so, by, by having that fulfillment yeah. within, mm -hmm. looking within to be fulfilled and mm -hmm. finding that fulfillment within, our relationships outside of us will be the half the burden hmm. because that love we seek already exists within, it, within us. Right. And so... That's so true. And um, people that don't have that are constantly perpetually seeking without mm. having affairs, they're mm. lying about this, they're, um, mm. you know, use, abusing drugs. We were talking about, you know, drug abuse mm. last week or alcohol abuse or any type of abuse mm. whatsoever, anything that hurts the soul, yeah. um, is usually an attempt to fill this sense of emptiness within, this yeah. void. Yeah. And you can choose to fill it with some toxic device like alcohol, drugs, and mm -hmm. um, what other mode or uh, vice you wish to abuse, 
Or you can get to know yourself, mm -hmm. recognize that what you have that to fill you already exists within you. Right. And emanate that from you to attract in return the love and the fulfillment it's and the return that you need. It's true. That's and that's essentially my relationship to music because when I'm feeling so empty or in a lot of pain or something overwhelmed in a negative way, the only way I can find release is through right by writing a song about it. And then in, in the writing of the song, there's a, mo most of my music starts often in a, in a dark place and then there's a moment in the song where I go, but I'm not going to stand for this. And it goes into a joyous kind of place of, you know, this is who I am and I'm going to rise above this and I'm going to survive kind of kind Tell of me thing. about um, upcoming gigs you have, any upcoming sure. performances? Sure. Um, um, tomorrow, I'm playing at the Googie's Lounge above the living room, and oh, nice. Jack Hardy was a very famous singer-songwriter, and he passed away recently, and this is a tribute show to him. Oh, how wonderful. So I attended where some is, of his... Where is the show? You want, do you want to tell the sure, audience? Sure, it's at um, 154 Ludlow Streets. Okay, downtown? The, uh, yeah, downtown. Okay. So take the F train to 2nd Avenue. Okay. And uh, it's at Googie's Lounge Above the Living Room with Amy Emmer Emmerman, she books it, she okay. performs, okay. and her friends. So we have the bass player for Adam Levy, the bass player for Nora Jones is going to be performing oh, wow. there Lovely. with us. Um, so we have a whole lineup of people. Everybody just does so three exciting. songs. And, and it's a tribute to him. I, I went to some of the songwriting uh, circles that Jack Hardy did where you bring a song and it gets critiqued. Right. So I know him that way and that's how I'm connected to this how event. How exciting for you. Yeah, this very is totally exciting. I'm totally excited for you. Oh, you're so sweet. Tell me about your tour. Tell me, tell me about the highlights of your tour when you're touring North America uh, and Europe. Well, um, I toured uh, Europe uh, just last fall and it was amazing. I uh, Performing in Paris, I felt that people were so easily impressed and you know like we're in New York there's so much talent and right. in Paris they were like wow what I do is so different it's maybe what I do is very New York I play piano I sing I've got a big loud voice you know and people love me here but, but you it's, have a big heart too yeah yeah and 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 in Paris I, I a lot of the female singers sing very softly and very are very mm. soft and feminine in this mm. way and I'm very feminine but I'm like New York. I'm like more like Edith Piaf actually like very French like <laughs> I'm actually extremely French but so many of the women the singers there I noticed were you very soft. You grew up soft. in Toronto right? Yeah I'm, I, I'm fluent so I'm, in French. I'm, fluent, I'm, I'm, I'm fluent in French I'm not French my background isn't French. but so I'm, I'm, aussi. Oh yeah okay d'accord <laughs> yeah so I'm actually it's actually very French to be belty like the Edith Piaf but there's not a lot of it it's like the women are shy or something right. so I went there and I played piano and I belted out my soul and my heart and I made them laugh and whatever and it was like the warmest reception and I played in in England in the south of England and it was just it was amazing I love Europe and I'm planning um, going back I love Europe in the too. fall Europe is great. yeah Europe is great but the, uh, I, I mean I love America America is the New York greatest. is the place to live New York is the capital I'm a New Yorker darling. yeah born and raised yeah oh born in I mean I'm, I'm a New Yorker yeah and so uh New York is. It's a place to it live. It is the capital of the world. It yeah, is. it is. And um, but Europe's amazing. But to Europe visit. is amazing, and you and I, I'm a firm believer of world travel. I, yes. That's what I love about my work too, because I travel a lot for my work as well. Right. But um, yeah, you you have to be an American. You have to be proud of your your the country that you're from, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you don't really know people. We don't really know humanity until we experience. Yeah. And I never take a tour. I've traveled. Literally by myself alone, Perfect. just myself. Yes. Well, this is before Oscar. I haven't traveled much, um, not professionally, um, mm. in the last six years since. Well, it's been a while because of Oscar. You committed to being yeah, in his life because and... career-wise, I haven't right. had, like personal vacation time. Any oh, trips I, I see. take now are business trips. Right. Where I have speaking engagements. I don't have a lot of tour time. You know, like yeah. personal. You know, yeah. hanging out kind of time. Yeah. But I do. I do love to travel, yeah. and whenever I did travel personally, it was never on a tour. It was always local color. I was soaking up the local color. Yeah. It was just yeah. me alone. It's great, and it's the only way to really get a sense of the culture, mm -hmm. the what makes the world what it is. I think it's so healthy to get away from your own country and get your own world, your own world. And even Absolutely. your own country and your own foods and the colors that people wear here and the fashion, just get away from wherever you are, go somewhere totally different, and it's so refreshing, like the foods and I, everything. Then you come also, back when I was in you have Spain, such perspective. Yeah, I was in Spain, and this is going to be a little funny, but I was in Spain in 92, 
And I, I, I'm pretty good in French, and I thereby have a working knowledge of Spanish. Right. But it was the weirdest thing. In Spain, I had such a hard time. They didn't really speak a lot of English there. Right. Most of the other places I visited, English wasn't a problem, etc. But, but in Spain, I had a hard time, and I remember. But when I was there, I was just like just freedom, Ayala, you know, like just being me. <sighs> Spain, you know, no, like that. No, no pantyhose, mm. no, un, you know, no bras, whatever. Just casual. Just, you know, Toledo yeah. one day, Madrid another day. I was in Ibiza for about five or six days. It was a blast. And I remember getting back to New York. To the real world, and I had to. I had was starting my job, you know, going back to work the next day. I had a you know corporate America job, and I was putting on pantyhose for the first time in like three yeah. weeks, and I was like, this doesn't feel right. I want to be free. Yes. So now I don't have to wear pantyhose anymore. Good for you. It company. frees you up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I remember coming back and actually being really sad and missing the food in France. Oh. Because Italy. I, Italy's amazing. We're thinking of going. Have I'm, you been to Italy? To it, no, I'm you, you have thinking to. of going this September. We're I'm totally. Oh, I love. Italy. We just want to like spend a, a week in Rome or something. Rome is the most romantic and beautiful city. It really, really. Yeah, is. we just want to eat pizza and gelato. And you have to go to Capri. Okay. And eat pasta and gelato. All right. All right. Pasta and gelato. And the seafood's great too. But um, yeah, I just you know people. There are people that say, "Oh, I love America." I know there's so much to see in America. Yeah, but yeah, you don't get but culture. You don't get to see yes. how how and where everything. Go to the source of yeah. history. The source of yeah. you know you can read history books and learn about you know the the Roman Empire, but you could go to Rome and see the Colosseum yeah. and see. It's just it's so fascinating to be part. And Israel too is another place I frequented, of oh, course. I and the the, the the antiquity of such an old. You learn Ancient, so much. Ancient, historic place. Have you been to Israel? Not yet. You learn so much go. from traveling. When I was a, a child, my mother took me and my brother, just the three of us, mm -hmm. and we went on a trip for six months around the world, mainly in Asia. Wow. And all like, we, we were hiking in the rainforest. We stayed in villages with like local people. We were riding elephants. It was like totally rustic and it blew my mind and it made me who I am today. There's no other way to really connect with the world in which we live, which mm -hmm. is all one. Yes. You know, there's yeah. one source and... God is one, and we are one yeah. with God, yeah. the source, however you want to define that. Mm -hmm. And there's no way to really know it. Until you see it. Until you see it, and yeah. experience it for yourself, and taste feel it, it, and smell it, and taste yes. it, etc. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. and when people, this may seem very radical, but when people say America is the greatest country in the it world, is. I I think it's I I disagree. I think well, so many. I'm Canadian, <laughs> but I'm Canadian. So I choose to live here. I adore New York. There's a lot about America I love, but there's a lot about Canada I love. There's a lot about Sweden I love. I mean, I love like so many countries, and I think why did why do, there's no competition? Why do we have to put boundaries? Yeah. Like, or labels on them? Why would we put that? Why would you say it's the best? In some ways, America's the best, and well, in some ways, Sweden's the best, well, and in some ways, Italy's the best, and in some I, ways, China's I the best. We all have our strengths. It's like people. That's I, me I seem agree. radical. I agree. My darling, I agree. Yeah, I actually I support your position because I I I, 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 I profess this. We all have strengths and challenges. And challenges. However, that's it. America, my darling, if I may enlighten you, sure. Because I'm I am a patriot American, right? And a proud patriot yeah. American. America is an idea, right? America is not Canada or France or Italy or Sweden. Mm -hmm. America, the United States of America, mm -hmm. is an idea, right? That was founded by our forefathers. Right. Although Israel is an idea. Israel, my darling, is not an idea. Israel is a nation. Right. Israel is a nation. America was, Israel is an, a, a nation created by God, if you will, like all the other nations and all the other people. Right. But Israel is a nation created by God and was given a constitution called the Torah through Moses, the messenger, for the that was received by the nation of Israel, the Jewish people, right. to be a beacon and to be a guide in the world. That is the distinct uniqueness of being of Israel. Israel, the land of Israel, mm -hmm. is the land of the Jewish people. Um, the nation of Israel is the Jewish people, and their constitution is the Torah, right. or the Old Testament. Um, the United States of America, my darling, and I love traveling, and I love Italy, and I can love things about France and all, and Canada, all of it. Yeah. It's all beautiful. It's all God's work. Yeah. But the United States of America is unique in and of itself. And if anyone ever dares, and, and personally, I have issues with how Israel is doing things these days because I they're trying too. to be a little America, mm -hmm. and that isn't right. Right. Because there's only one America. There's only one United States of America. 
where, you know, um, our constitution is supposed to be enforced and the rule of land, the rule of law, the rule of land, if you will, for us mm -hmm. and how we're supposed to, to live. And it's an idea that was created by man mm -hmm. over 200 years ago, mm -hmm. where you have a melting pot mm -hmm. of people from all over the world that come here for one thing, to be free. Mm -hmm. In Israel, it's each Jewish, Jewish, Jewish person's right to be a Jew, free, without limitation, without inhibition, without constraints in the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. In Italy, it is every individual's right to be an Italian and to be you know, Roman Catholic or whatever the, the prevailing mm -hmm. faith is, whatever it is, in Italy, and, in, and to eat the Italian food in, in mm -hmm. France. But the United States of America is specifically the only one of its kind where we welcome people from all backgrounds, all nations, all... Canada does that too. Okay. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I, uh, okay, that's cool. But the United States of America, well, maybe they copied us. I don't, I don't know the history of Canada so well, and history is not my forte. But I it do know... It was just know, natural. I do know that, I do know the Amer American history to the extent that the Constitution was created as an yeah. idea to, to provide... Um, a refuge, a land of opportunity for people to come here and create a life in mm -hmm. freedom, mm -hmm. in, in absolute freedom, which is a very important message that I try to enforce yes. in my message about life and love and, yeah. and living a love-centered life and living a, a, a life of holism mm -hmm. because, in essence, that is freedom. You know, yeah. Thomas Jefferson wrote in the Constitution, about our inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yeah. You know, I... Sorry. I, Go, ahead. Go ahead. I studied Native studies, okay. Native Canadian studies, yes. um, for a few years in college. I majored in that before switching to music. Okay. And I learned, this was mind-blowing, Okay. that the Iroquois Confederacy, so the, the Ojibwe Nation, the Mohawk Nation, a lot of the, the Native American... The, they were Native American and Native Canadian. Correct. Um, they all had a government together called the Iroquois Confederacy. Okay. And in their constitution, they had a constitution, said everybody has the right to practice their own religion and, and said all these things. And actually, some of the founding fathers spent time with the Iroquois Confederacy. This is okay. something you will never learn in any textbook unless you wow. major in native, stu native studies. Okay. And if you look it up, it's, it blows your mind. Wow. So some of so a lot of the American Constitution was directly inspired by the Iroquois Confederacy, which that's has been around for thousands of years. And I also, that's very fascinating to learn. That's interesting to know, and I also believe a lot of the Constitution was inspired by, uh, by the Torah, by yeah. the Old Testament. I'm sure it was. On sure it was. Um, the rights to liberty, the rights to freedom, yes. and the pursuit of happiness. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. Because any religion, it was mixed together. Any religion, and I, I'm not a a fan or a believer of religion personally yeah. because I believe religion is man-made. Right. I'm, I'm a spiritual person. Yes. I believe in God. I believe in the Torah. I believe in one God and that God is one and I believe in the Torah as the constitution for humanity and how to live yeah. Yeah. a life. Uh, it's actually living the Torah life is living a, a love-centered life but um, we can't achieve fulfillment mm -hmm. unless we are truly free. Yeah. Unless we really know ourselves and become free in, in our quest for happiness right. and fulfillment yeah and so that's that's a very important message yeah but tell me and it's interesting because as a songwriter when I write a song it's it's I'm exploring a problem in my life mm -hmm. or an issue and it and it's something that feels very burning so it's something that's either been with me for a while or something that I've seen as a pattern in my life or in other people's lives and then and when I finish that song, I've somehow resolved the issue in me and I feel a, complete, a completeness and a peace, and somehow at peace. And then when I perform it for others, mm -hmm. then, and if you will come up to me afterwards and they, if they, you know, that peace moved me or brought me to tears or it really touched me because I went through that, then I know that I'm taking, you know, that I'm You're learning. I'm learning and You're I'm teaching right. at the same time as I'm Absolutely. learning. And so that's my work as a songwriter, which is probably very similar to what I'm doing. To what you're doing. Teaching to people yeah. how to love and be truly loved. That's I mean, one I, I, of my, uh, Samantha Swan is an incredible actress, who has been a mentor of mine. She says, you know, as actors, we're simply storytellers. Absolutely. As performers, actors, songwriters, or, you know, in the work and you, you do. you own the feelings. You need yeah. to have, you need to have the, the empathy and compassion. Yes to own the feelings in order to perform yes. in a certain light. Yeah. 
and to be the star that you are. <laughs> so that, I mean, that's what makes a good actress is someone right. that can actually feel yeah. what the character is supposed yes, to feel. Yes, you have to be, you have to be, you can never judge the character that you're playing. Right. People say, you know, oh, this seems like a bitchy character. It's like, I don't have the luxury of judging my character. I am this character. Tell me about I have to find the love in this character and be in her and understand her story and I have to portray it because this is her story and then through that people understand that story. Tell me about, um, Tell me about, you know what, we're going to take a break okay. um, in, a, in a minute or so. Sure. And when we come back, I want you to tell me about some of the challenging experiences you've had. Sure. As, or challenging, one of your greatest challenges that you've overcome as an actress and okay. playing a character role. Okay. And when we come back, we're going to also open some of our overwhelming response to some ask, I yell at questions right after these messages. Great, it's going great, the right? Camera's off. Yes. So I would like to thank our sponsors tonight. Um, a special thanks to our very special sponsors tonight. Um, first, I would like to thank MountGox.com, online exchange services for bitcoins. They now take Euro, British pound, Australian dollar, and Canadian dollar. They have continuing fees of 0.3% now through August 9th. Also, usgoldcoins.com, 1-800-HOT-COIN. Our trusted advisor for investments in rare gold and silver coins, Andy takes the mystery out of buying silver and gold by holding your hand. They take a hands-on approach. It's better to call and speak directly for current in inventory. Again, the number is 1-800-HOT-COIN and mezzagrill.com, where authentic Mediterranean foods meet modern flavor. Now serving breakfast at 8th Avenue and 55th Street in New York City, just a couple of blocks south of Columbus Circle. And I'd love to welcome you and invite you to please give me a jingle at Ask Ayelet, my Ask Ayelet voicemail, which is at 212 569 Six nine six nine again two one two five six nine six nine six nine or you can email me at ayelet at only one tv dot com that's ayelet a y e l e t at only one tv dot com I would love to hear from you and I may very well uh, answer your questions live on a future episode of always I yell it. Thank you. And now back to where we left off with, um, we were talking about the simple truth and your, uh, your work. Right, you were curious about what was a challenging role yes. as an actress. Yes, and how you bring the truth to mm -hmm. life in a character yeah. you play. Right, okay, so my latest role was actually pretty challenging. I played a therapist in the play is called Lemon Meringue, and I was actually the composer for the play. How wonderful, is it still, it's, it's, it's off? Um, it's off right now, but it's, they're doing some rewriting and it's gonna come back. Wonderful, you have to let me know. Yeah, lemonmeringue.com, and it's, it's actually uh, a true story. It's a guy from, Lemon, uh, from Long Island, and it's a story, it's his true story of what happened to him as a child, and it's an amazing story. It's an amazing. What does it touch upon? Like? Uh, it, well, he was sexually abused by his pediatrician. Oh wow! And his pediatrician was—he's now—he's in jail, and he had dozens and dozens of cases against him. And, wow! And he was, you know, eventually awarded, you know, all this money by the state and everything. But it was his story because he went into addiction, and he was very angry, and his relationships were falling apart, and he had no idea why. He had no memory of it. His pediatrician, his doctor, said to him, "You have a blood disorder. I have to see you." To his parent when he was mm -hmm. a child. I had to see him many times a week mm -hmm. and it was a lie. He had no blood disorder and in that he committed abuse oh, wow. to him. It's really sad. It's crazy. It's very sad. But it's an amazing, but this, the play is so uplifting. I mean it sounds like it would be horrible. Right, I play right. his therapist. Okay. It sounds like it would be horrible. Like you think, oh my god, I don't want to see that. But actually the whole thing is like People came out like just smiling and they had tears and they said, oh my God, that was so moving. And 
this makes me think of my brother. He told me once that he was abused. Like, it really makes you, people talk about sexual abuse against women, but they don't talk about it against having to men, men, but it actually happens to one in six men. Wow, that's amazing statistics. And it's not, statistics. they don't talk about it. But this play is so hopeful because he comes, he finds his whole truth and he comes to who he is and he faces himself. He does, he's this like tough guy guy from Long Island and his, his therapist is like, make a collage. Why don't you make a collage? And he's like, make a freaking collage? Are you, are you crazy? Collage. And he was like a collage. collage about your life about oh, your feelings okay. right? right and he's resisting the whole time right. and in the end he like completely it opens his mind and he like he, he forgives himself he'd been blaming himself and like his whole journey so it's actually so moving and I had to play therapist which was a really challenging role because I'm used to playing like the star and I actually work as a Lady Gaga impersonator and like I have, I have such a blast, I have a bubble dress and I'm outrageous. It's like being you. Yeah, it's like being me, right? So it's like I'm used to all this stuff and she is a very reserved, conservative person, right. very sweet, very giving, but very, but basically the character Rich is so volatile, he's about to explode with anger at any moment that she like really even brings herself down more. So I had to be like very very quiet, very suggestive, very right. giving. So you weren't being you. I was like the opposite of me. And at one point wow. I said to the director, are you sure you cast this well? Because I, I <laughs> and she just like, I believe in your acting abilities. That's right. And I just worked in, and I worked at it and, and I so finally find, found her. How did you find a calm center? I, you know, what it was is like, first I was too much, too sympathetic. I was too active as a therapist. Mm. And then, and then my director was like, pull it back, pull it back. And then I pulled back too much and she's like, you're not you. And I was like, what do you mean? Like I was me and you pulled me back. And then I just, I don't know. I found the middle and she, it was really through the director, Terry Muse. And she just, she was like, that's it, that's it, that's it. You know, just, you, you're, she just clued me in. Now you're thinking he's in pain. Now right. you're thinking this. And so it became all about like, all about him. Right. All about him, right? And then I, and then people came. Someone came up to me afterwards and said, "You were so selfless, you know." And you, and people who said, other people who really know that it's really weird watching you because it, like, I know you really well, and it was like not you at all. <laughs> so the whole time they're like, it was really weird. And other people was like, right. it was amazing. And and I and I and I pulled from my own experience because I've done my own therapy, and I pulled a lot from that. Although my therapist is different from Gail, from that, you know. Right. How is your therapist different from? My Gail? therapist talks more. Right. You know, maybe not at the beginning. She was a little more quiet, but she talks more. She's more, and she gives me her opinion. Okay. She has more of a personality. Yeah, many therapists have, have different styles. Different styles, but, but I had I found, to be the traditional. What I found very um, compelling of what you just shared about the play, about the character, mm -hmm. rich, rich, the character, yeah, is that. Um, People resist and deny yes. their truth because it's so painful. And we talked about it a little bit in, in last week's show. If you want to go back and watch yes. episode one, um, I was, I had Tim Moss as a guest. Such a darling. He's a good friend of mine. So, yeah, ditto, mutual. Uh, just, just a really amazing talent and just an extraordinary human being. And we were talking about, we talked about denying our truth and knowing, not knowing our truth. And we talked a little bit about astrology and, and um, it, it's painful because people mm. live most of their lives and in some very sad cases all of their lives mm -hmm. resisting the truth mm -hmm. and they're never happy and it, nothing breaks my heart more than than seeing this or knowing this even personally in my life yeah. you know there are people in our lives yeah. they exist in each of our lives that just refuse to grow and I when I say grow I mean mm -hmm. Accept the reality of what is happening to you. Understand why it is happening to mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. and learn and move on. Yeah, get that lesson under your in your yeah. in your little notch and move on. And create a new life for yourself that's free from the old patterns. Exa I love you for saying that, my darling. That's exactly what I'm trying to inspire people to do. Is it's not creating a new life. It's creating the life you're supposed to yes. have. Yes. It's becoming. That's fulfilling for you. It's becoming who you are. Right. We are here on this earth from the moment, from the second we are born, becoming who we are. Right. It's all one. It's all one reality. It's a very metaphysical yeah. kind of um, a challenging concept to take a, to have a grasp on mm -hmm. but for those of you and I've gotten a lot of responses a lot of emails for the more mystically inclined and spiritually inclined and psychologically inclined and, and and just regular ordinary you know people um, 
that I believe are at the dawn of an awakening. We're, we yeah. are at the dawn of an awakening right now, a yeah. universal awakening. It's the evolutionary process of our, of our civilization, mm -hmm. human civilization, to be awakened now at this time, at the dawn of this new era. And um, I firmly believe in, in truth there is freedom. And it's, I'm not saying the journey will be easy no. or without pain. But it's worth but, it. Thank you, my darling. Because unless you feel the pain yeah. and let go of the attachments, yeah. that's what this is about. It's about yeah. letting go of the attachments because um, that's not love. Yeah. Attaching clinging, right. possessing, right. that's not love. Right. Freedom is love. Yeah. And if someone on their own free will yes. loves you back, when yeah. you're free enough to be love, yeah. you will attract love. And that love will be free in that thing. And, the, and then the union is, you know, people talk about marriage. And of course, I'm a matchmaker. And so I'm an advocate for the institution of marriage. Absolutely. But only when it's a true connection. Yes. It's not a marathon. Marriage is not a marathon for, oh, I can stick it through another, f oh, we've been together for 10 years, let's stick it out another five, let's stick it out another 10, oh, we, we're, yeah. we're different. And that's how many people live their lives. Oh, we've been together for already 10, 15 years, oh, we've got two kids. But you're miserable, oh. you're unfaithful to yourself. It's not yeah. about infidelity. Infidelity isn't about, you know, Anthony Weiner going online. Anthony Weiner, oh, I shouldn't be mentioning people's names, or should I? But it's, he's been all over the world, so. I mean, it was public. It was it was a public display of toxic manifestations hidden in someone's psyche. Yeah. That can't handle his truth because if he did, he would have owned his position. He would have owned his power, and he wouldn't have had to act out mm -hmm. in such a defiling manner. Yeah. Hurting himself and hurting the people he loved. But he hurt himself a long time before yeah. when he wasn't listening to his heart and being true to his heart. Yeah, yeah. And that's what's painful. He's and so obviously in a lot of pain. If I, can, if I can urge anyone, it's, you know, it hurts. But so, sometimes the choice, the path less traveled mm -hmm. is more difficult. But there's a reward in that. It's like going up a mountain, you get a better view. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> or it's like all you, the, you know. I wrote the. I wrote. The, did you read the poem? I wrote the gift yes, on my website. It's beautiful. It's so. We moving. should collab co collaborate and potentially maybe you can compose the the music. Oh, that'd be great. For it. I'd love. I'd be so honored. That would be, that would be amazing. Yeah. We should talk about that. Okay. We should talk about. And that. for those of you out there, um, if you go to my website, always com, go to I yell at Media Publications. It's called the gift. It's a poem I recently composed and authored and wrote for um, someone very special to me. And it's um, you can download it for free at this time <laughs> um, on alwaysayelit.com. And so, uh, yeah, that'll be totally, because to it's to totally yeah. along the lines of how to find true love. I mean, the right. answers are in there. And for all those readers out there, anyone who downloads the poem and can decipher what the token is, um, Maybe we'll have you on as a guest and we can talk about it. <laughs> That's the, the secret code of the poem. But tell me um, about, um, so the play has finished up, but it's going to be re, 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 uh, vamping yes, in a couple of weeks. Yes, it is. Yeah, people can go to lemonmeringue.com or go wonderful. to my website wonderful. To, to, wonderful. to find it. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. And so now I think it's time. Is there... Um, something that you wanted to tell me, so you're performing tomorrow night. Do you have any other upcoming night. gigs? Yes, I'll be performing um, in a couple of weeks. I forget the exact date, August something. It's on my website. Okay. It's a big show. It's called Logo Artists Live for the artists who've had music videos on MTV Logo. And okay. we're doing a show at the Triad Theater, which is a really big venue. Okay, where is that? Um, it's, uh, I don't even remember. No, what's the, what is the name of the theater? Triad Theater. The Triad Can Theater. Can you spell it? T R I A D. Thank you. The Tri Ad Theater in New York City. Yeah, in New York City. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. So I have that going on. And I have a lot of, I have this crazy. And your website is? AthenaReich.com. A T H E N A R E I C H.com. Wonderful. So tune in. And the name Lots of, of your shows. most a recent release? Little Girl Dreams. Okay. Which is on iTunes. Wonderful. Yeah. We all have little girl dreams. We do. In fact, and just today dreams. someone was telling me, oh, I sound like a little girl. I said, yes, because I'm still a little girl. Right. There's that little girl in me, and it's there, there's that little girl in you, and yeah. there's a little boy in each of us, and a little girl in each yeah. of us, and 
We just need to become, not lose the little girl in us or, or yeah. stop loving her, but become the women and men that we are and that we are destined to be. Yeah. So um, what I'd love for you, if you, can you stay for a little while longer? Sure, okay. What I would love to do is open up some emails from some of our readers. Oh, great. On askayala.com. Ask yeah. her, what is it that you would like, baby? You want to ask a question? You want to kiss mommy on public television? I don't think, baby. No public displays. <laughs> no public displays. Why don't you sit and take a nap? And we're going to open up some emails. I, I was flooded. It's amazing. It's amazing. I got some voicemails and I got some emails. And I don't know, maybe some of this will resonate for you. Maybe you can chime in on your advice as well. But okay. I think they want my advice. So right. this is the Ask Ayala segment. And let's see. Um, so many questions, so many emails. You don't know where to begin. Our first email is from Joanna from Scarsdale. Joanna asks, she says, you, in your la Dear Ayala, in your last email, you were talking about relationships, that 98% of relationships are doomed for failure. What constitutes a failed relationship? Hmm. That's a good question. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. What, do you, what do you think constitutes a failed relationship, Athena? I mean, of wisdom. I feel like when it ends, it's failed. A lot of people will disagree with me and say you should see the good in it and like all of this. And I'm just like, as long if I love that person, which I've always chosen people that I've loved, and 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 if they if they weren't willing to stick it out to work it out, then I I do feel like it, it failed and wasted my time. And a lot of people disagree with me. Okay. I know they will. I, I I already do disagree with you. I know. And I'll tell you why and how. Okay. First of all. There is no such thing as a failed rel well doomed for failure. What 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 do I mean? The question is what do I mean about a failed relationship? Failed relationship means there's no love, mm -hmm. there's no win, right? And it's a use or abuse relationship. Right. The relationship might still be perpetuating. That's true. That doesn't it. mean that you have a relationship. Right. It means you're in a failed relationship. That's true. Okay. If in fact the relationship actually terminates mm -hmm. and you feel like it was a waste, is that what you were saying? But then it was a success because you terminated a, a used abuse. You terminated really. and you. That's true. You, you, it, was, it is a success because, because you, you left. You it. ended an, a cycle of abuse. Right. You mastered a valuable lesson in that. Yeah, that's true. In that relationship. That's true. And nothing is in vain. Yeah. In some cases, there might be children, there might be businesses, there might be homes, there might be possessions, yeah. you know, material things Lost. that you may have that you may have acquired along the way, or things. Everybody, right. ha you know, everybody gives that's us true. something. Right. So there's there's no failure in that regard. Right. So when I say a failed relationship, what I mean is. If you're just perpetuating and not learning or growing, you're in a failed relationship and, and your relationship is failing. But just because you're in a relationship doesn't mean it's, it's not a failure. Just because you're in a relationship, if there is no love, if there's no win-win in the relationship, and if it is a use or abuse relationship, it is a failure, in my view. Because all relationships should always be love-centered, should always be truth based, should always be freedom based and love centered. I said it already. So <laughs> so that's my answer for what constitutes a failed relationship. If it's not love centered, it's a failed relationship. Ask yourself, is there honor? Is there value? Is there devotion? Not commitment. We can all be committed to each other, do our obligation, do our duty, do our due diligence. But if there's no honor for one another, if there's no value, appreciation for one another, and in many cases, it's the simple inability or the incapacity to um, appreciate another person. It is not a love relationship. To love is to honor. If there is no honor, if it's based on a lie, if you're lying to each other, if you're deceiving each other in any fashion, mm -hmm. even if you think it's for their own good, mm -hmm. it's not love. You're doing them a disservice. You're doing them an injustice. Speak the truth. Be the truth that you are. And end the relationship as a successful lesson in life and move on to seeking uh, your, your journey, move along your journey for, to holism, being whole, having integrity, and living a love-centered life, and you will find someone who will love you in your entirety, as I wrote in the poem, exactly as you are and exactly as you're meant to be. 
Thank you, Joanna from Scarsdale, and um, I hope that you will find some solace in my answer. Um, next, we have a question from Michael in Manhattan. Michael writes, how do you know when a relationship is over? When is it time to say goodbye? What do you mm. think? I think when you've exhausted, when you, I, I do believe in like trying to work really hard. I believe that every relationship comes to a point. I love you because you're so prototypical to my work, but continue. Yeah, okay. I believe that every relationship, there comes to a point where you really see each other and every relationship has its challenges. And if both people are willing to work together and grow together and adapt to each other, then it's going to be successful and it's going to grow. So if you come to those challenges and you realize that your partner or, or, or you or whatever, it, there's an incompatibility and you're not able to adapt to each other in a way without losing who you are, then, then it's not going to work. But if you realize, I ha I'm, I'm quirky this way, you're quirky this way, we can work with this. You know, when you tip me off this way, I'm going to do this, and you do this, and you say it like this, and blah, blah. You don't have to change who you are, but adapt it a bit because it drives me nuts. Right. So if you can you have know, that dialogue. So when, is so, it, when is it time to say goodbye? When you've had the, these conversations with your partner, and your partner basically, like, is not a willing participant. Is like, I don't want to talk about this, or is like... Is incapable. Unwilling. I'm in incapable to do this, or fights you, or just like, or, or you feel like you're adapting to your partner so much, and your partner's not adapting to you. Because I do believe you have to grow in love together. Absolutely. And so if you're adapting more than my they're darling, adapting... If you go to my AskAyella.com website, you will see that I write and I say over and over again, it takes two, two, not one, two, whole people, yeah. that's W-H-O-L-E, two whole people to have a true connection, a lasting, truly loving relationship. Yeah. Two whole people to have a true connection. Love is not the mythical completion of one another. You know, no one's going to fill your void. You need to be whole in and of yourself and then find someone who is going to love you exactly as you are. You don't have to change a thing and you are free. Key word today, my darlings, is free, F-R-E-E, -E, freedom. Um, find the freedom to be who you are and be loved for who you are. And, find, and then hopefully you'll love someone who actually loves you for exactly who you are. Not what you do for them, mm -hmm. not what you represent to them, nothing superficial. Just be. And that's how you know you have, um, that's how you know when you have a true connection. So to answer the question, how do you know when a relationship is over? The answer is, my darling, mm -hmm. Athena, is when your heart is saying to you, this isn't right, yeah. and I want to work to make it right, mm -hmm. that's when it's over. Really? Really. I disagree. <laughs> you want me to tell you why? Yeah. Because if it's, if it's truly love, yeah. and you're in simpatico with each other, yeah. guess what, darling? It's not work. I know this is going to blow everybody's mind because everybody says work on your relationship, work on... It's not work. Yeah. It's love. Yeah. I love being here. I love my show. I love my work. This isn't work. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you define passion. work that way, then... Well, that's what work is, my darling. Right, right. Isn't it? Right. I just when believe every love, couple... What happens when, when it's love, conflicts. it is truth. There are no conflicts. There might be misunderstandings. Well, yeah. There might be um, disappointments. Yeah. But when there's love, it's yeah. not conflict. No? It's a, no, darling. It's a misunderstanding. Right. And a disappointment. But sometimes you have to... Not a conflict. But sometimes you have to work in... Not work, but you have to just... You have to have that... It, it might be difficult or painful or scary to say, what really happened there? Oh, it was a misunderstanding. Right. That's what I and mean by the And then both people say, oh, it was a misunderstanding. Yeah. Agree, kiss and make up. Right. And you're moving on. That's you're what I mean. Working, but I that's call not, that work. Okay. That's not working. Okay. That's relating. Yeah. Well, that's okay. relating in a love-centered yeah. manner. Yeah. When, where your, your egos are out the door. They don't even come, play into the relationship. I don't mean anything else other than that. Well, okay. I'm glad we That's all I meant. I'm, so for the audience. If it's painful and it's making you feel like work, crap. it's not love. I mean making you feel like crap. If it makes you feel like crap, that's not worth it. Right. If that's, it's an effort, it's not love. That's when the relationship is over. If someone just doesn't get you. Just doesn't get you. Yeah. I got an email back from somebody. I, you know, there, there's people that just don't. 
They don't have the capacity to. Yeah. As much as they want to. Yeah. And again, their their desire for you or their relation relationship with you may not be wholly sound. Yeah. Because of the of the simple fact that they have a a subconscious need to control or possess. Yeah. Which defies the definition of love. If you go to my website alwaysayella.com and you will learn that you know, you mustn't have the, the, the emotional desire to control or possess in the context of a loving relationship. Yeah. If the, those ingredients exist, even though there's all the caring, all the love, all the support, all the respect, but there's an emotional need to control or possess, it's not love. End it. Move on. Find the love you need. Find the love you need. Not the love you want. The love that is out there to, to fulfill you. Um, do we have time for... One more question. Um, let's see. Let me see if we can make a... I have so many questions. Okay. Alexandra from Toronto. She writes... Actually, she called in. How do you know when the struggles you're going through in a relationship are solvable or a warning that the relationship isn't working? Another great question, Alexandra. Um, another great question is if the... If the the struggles you're going through in a relationship are solvable. Again, if they are material issues, Alexandra, if they are something, anything to do with the material world of illusion, like are we going to move to California because of my job opportunity? Are we going to buy a new SUV because we have three more kids? Is it something material? If your issues are material, then um, it's solvable. That's nonsense. But if your issues are spiritual, you're not connecting spiritually, you're not connecting emotionally, you're not connecting mentally, you have absolutely nothing in common, mm -hmm. okay? There's no honor, there's no respect, there's no appreciation, there's no comprehension of what this other person is, then guess what? That's not solvable. You can't fit a round peg into a square. You can't fit a square peg into a circle. It's just not going to happen. So if the issues go to the core, whenever I always say, when you have a problem, don't look at the symptoms. Mm -hmm. What are we fighting about? Oh, we're fighting over money. Money's not the problem, money's the symptom. Mm -hmm. Go to the source of the issue. Mm -hmm. Dig within, and always you can always call me at 212-569-6969, leave a voicemail and I will be happy to respond to it. Or you can uh, reach me also for private consultations. I'm always happy, willing to help. And I'm now running a special offer to our Only One TV viewers, uh, which is you can find on special events and offers at alwaysayella.com. Um, but if the answer is fundamental, if there's a fundamental truth that isn't gelling between the two of you, mm -hmm. if there's a lack of truth between you, mm -hmm. If your not, morals are different, it's not your values. Values. values if your are values important. aren't the same, yeah. if you're exactly, right. it's not solvable. Yeah. And I'm not even talking religion. You can have different religions, no, but, but, ha but share the same values. Definitely. It's about common values, common goals. Um, what you want out of your life. Just an emotional compatibility, just a, yeah. just a connection yeah. that you feel um, divinely yeah. tuned into. But I think there's also problems that are not and, and when that, material. But, okay, when you have, okay, when you have, yeah. then there shouldn't be a struggle. Right. True love is not a struggle. But there is struggle Such sometimes. Such as? Like, I don't know, if people, if they, if they, you know, people just, you know, what, people have problems, <laughs> right? Like they rub each other the wrong way, like somebody. Because their egos are involved. Well, everything because you're saying, you I'm going to review everything you're saying. Their only problems are being yeah. true to themselves right. and with each other. Yeah. You have to be true. But you, like, so there are material problems that I agree are solvable, and I agree that if you disagree on values or you don't have a connection, it's not solvable. You if, have to share if values. Have a, if you, but if you have a problem in the middle where it's kind of like, I don't know, somebody, say somebody irritates somebody because they're always, I'm trying to think of they an example. Love. They, they don't love. Because love is accepting one Two sides of the coin. I think you missed the last week's show. There's yeah. two sides to every coin. Right. And you have to so love all of the You person. have to love both sides. But, you have to understand that there's both sides to the but coin. But what is growing together to you? 
That's a good question. <laughs> She's asking the questions now. We have but we're, we're, our time is almost up. Maybe for so next episode. Fun. This is so much fun. What is growing together? But uh, yeah, I would love to see you again. Yes, yeah, it was thank so, you so, so much so for wonderful having to me. have you. Yes, thank you. To have you, you as my guest. And I'm wishing you all the I'm not gonna say break a leg, but I'm gonna say knock them dead because you will and you are a star. And Lady Gaga, Lady Gaga, watch out because you've got some competition here. <laughs> And um, I'm really, really proud of you, and I, I really hope that we will get together. But just to answer the question, um, how do you grow? You have to have a, a, a like-mindedness yeah. at the onset. You have to have the potential for like-mindedness. At the onset, yes. You must have potential for like-mindedness at the onset or inherent in your unique selves in order to be able to grow together. Yes. So that when the challenges occur, yes. or outside influences may challenge your union, you will you will overcome them, yes. no matter what. No yes. matter what the baggage is, no matter what you the will challenges over, are. It's, yeah. You will overcome them if yeah. you come from a like-minded place. Yes. Common values, common goals, and a true, I think that's true honor devotion, honor, devotion, and value for one another, for oneself and one another. And that is the paradigm for true love. You must have honor, devotion, and value as central and based on a found. We must have honor, devotion, and value sitting on a foundation of truth. If you have that, you will overcome World War Three. Right. You will overcome the depression of the 21st century. You yeah. will overcome disease and plague and, all, and everything. And your life will be so much more blessed and easy and effortless for for that love. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say. Is is if you can overcome struggles or things together, then you know it's a, it's then a you success. Know. Exactly. It's a success. Well, no, 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 no. Not necessarily, my darling. If you can truly solve them. No. No? You, you could don't... be doing it out of devotion. If, if your relationship, it doesn't go yeah. this way. It's not overcoming the challenge. Yeah. It's recognizing the obstacles on our, on our joined path. Yeah. If your relationship is a challenge, we, do, we need to end. Right. But if, you're, if your relationship is a challenge, yeah. it's not. But we'll, 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 we'll continue this okay. again soon. Um, with all my love, I thank you so much for tuning in again today. Tune in again next week at 6 p.m. sharp, live Eastern Time from New York City. Um, thank you, audience, for joining me. I wish you a love-centered life, and I wish you all the best in the upcoming week. Um, I am always Ayelet.